All right, so uh, with you two, I wanted to start where it all began, cooking. Um, <laughs> you began as the chef, and you were kind of a very bad chef. Mm -hmm. um, and then in season three, there was that scene where Billy was skinning some animal, yes. revealing previously unknown cooking skills. <laughs> well, skinning <laughs> skills. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So women everywhere dropped to the floor. <laughs> <laughs> You're originally going to be with your shirt off in an apron, weren't you? That's right. The, the, the original idea for that scene was to, for me to be dressed with an apron with my shirt off doing it. Like and like and slashes of blood, yeah. <laughs> but then it just looks exactly like I've got nothing on underneath the apron. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it didn't look good. So I guess I'll start with you. For you, um, when do you think that Silver kind of started seeing Billy as more of an equal? I... Oh, okay. I... I th I think season three was the real big, where kind of their friendship started to started to blossom mm. between Billy and Silver. I think, because before that, I mean, Silver kind of looked down on everyone because he just thought this was a very stupid way to make a living, like the the risk of death and, and yeah, and living out on those ships all the time. It, like he never wanted to be a part of it. After the end of season two, in a way, being forced to be a part of it and then making that choice to be with the men. It's very, I think it was very clear to him early on that Billy was a genuinely good guy and someone that he should align himself with. Um, yeah, because for that first part of season three, it's kind of them against Flint. After, I think it was definitely, he was definitely silver more in the, the thorn in Billy side for a long time. Mm. Um, yeah, I think, like going from the beginning, I think uh, it's very evident to Billy that silver is is not a team player to start with. He's out for himself. So that's everything against what Billy believes in on a, on a pirate ship, you know. Uh, the crew is everything and, and fighting for each other is everything. So it wasn't really until I think season two, like towards the end of season two, yeah. when he sees, he's looking around and he's seeing that actually these guys all really care about this guy and he can actually see that he is doing things now for the good of the crew. And he's actually a better choice of quartermaster than I am. So I think at that point, that's a big turning point, really, in season two. And then, like you say, like the, the, the friendship sort of blossoms. <laughs> blossoms, such a weird <laughs> word to <laughs> use for Black Sails. Um, through season three and um, the, the problems they're having with, with Flint throughout season three. And I think as well, like he doesn't, Billy doesn't see the other relationship that's going on between Silver and Flint and how that's growing, it doesn't it happens behind closed doors almost for Billy. So in his head, it's it's still these two versus Flint a lot of the time. So he's still got his thing against Flint that he thinks Silver is still on the same mind track, you know. Um and mild spoiler alert for anyone who has not read Treasure Island, although I don't feel that bad because it's hundreds of years old. Yeah. Um, you two are kind of the only characters who kind of have to survive to the end. Yeah. Um, and so if you, if we ignore that, if you were to die, how, what, what is your ideal death for your character? Oh, it, definitely not in water. I feel like I've, I've spent most of Black Sails in the water and most of the time it then gets cut out. I think half the times I've been in the water, which is usually like when it's freezing, like getting into winter and four in the morning and I'm putting the water, that scene's cut out of the show. So just somewhere really dry. But I think for Silver, how would Silver die? It'd be something stupid, I think. If it happened in the, like if I didn't have to live to the end, I was gonna die in the first two seasons, it'd be, it'd just be something dumb. It'd be him tripping over and landing on someone else's sword or something, or his own sword. <laughs> um, I think, I think probably because I'm, I think I'm the only character in the show um, who hasn't had one, uh, so probably die in some kind of sex scene. Um, uh, Just I has a heart attack. Yeah. I no. can't oh, believe it's happening. Yeah. <laughs> Is this real? Uh, um, but uh, yeah, I think there was a lot of debate going on about whether Billy was asexual at one point because yeah. like, there's never any, you know, he has no attraction to anything other than the, the crew around him, apparently. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, probably something like that. I think he's just probably very aware of hygiene. A guy in there, like, I'm just going, I'm going to wait till I'm back in a city with... It doesn't yeah, feel right. I'm gonna, I'll come back. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of debate about whether Billy is asexual, there is a lot... <laughs> um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of kind of stuff that's read between the lines because there's a lot that's not shown to us on screen about your characters. Is there anything about your character's backstory that you've worked out in your head that we have not necessarily seen on screen yet? I think, in a way, 
that kind of gets delved into a bit for Silver in season four, uh, in a way that's kind of in, that's really interesting. Um, so I won't say too much, but the, one of the things about Silver is he is the guy from nowhere, and I think that compared to someone like Flynn, who you know you learn in season two everything about his backstory and what makes him who he is. The interesting thing about Silver is that I've had some ideas and some of them are matched up with the writers, but it's funny to also go that for the context of the show and the relationships, it's really, it's less important, I think, for Silver, that he's just a guy who happened to rock up here at this time, and because of that, it affects all the other characters in kind of a major way. Yeah. And what about you? Um, yeah, it's interesting. I was always really interested about where, what Silver was doing, like the, the weeks before he ended yeah. up being where he was. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I think like Luke was saying, you know, you, you, you chat to the, the creatives. Like I remember having a chat with John Steinberg when we first got to Cape Town before we started shooting about, you know, sort of backstory stuff and how Billy came onto the ship and everything. And um, there's a lot talked about in season two about uh, Billy's parents and him being a leafleter uh, in, in London. And we sort of talked about um, him going onto the ship quite early on and Gates basically sort of bringing him on as his little his little right hand man I suppose and getting him to do odd jobs around the ship and uh, teaching him the ways of pirate life and I think that it feeds into why Billy it's it's all he knows and it's, it's everything he cares about um, it's his family they're all his brothers and I think because he's it's almost like he's just grown up that's been his family for like the last sort of like 15 years or something so um, yeah, it's all he's ever known in a lot of ways. So yeah, that, that kind of image in my head uh, making the show was always very clear um, and I enjoyed that, that side of it. Absolutely. And since this is the final season, do you have any favorite memories from the set? Oh man, so many. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, what, I'm uh, trying to think of something, trying to think of something different as well. Yeah. Um, it's, I have to say there's most of the time on set, Look, we're mostly shooting. It's because it's we've got so much to do on the show. We spend a lot of time on those ships and out there. There isn't a lot of sitting around. But when we are, it's kind of just the funnest thing. Because it's... Everyone's so lovely. Toby Stevens is the funniest guy in the world. <laughs> and so, you know, most of the time when we're not, like, shooting a scene on Black Sails, we're in a little tent with some very healthy food. And usually Toby Stevens crying in laughter from one of his own jokes and I think that's <laughs> and uh, and I think that's that's kind of what I'll always remember is kind of just us sitting around Tom complaining about food not arriving <laughs> Toby Stevens yeah laughing at his own jokes and just it always being really a really fun place to be and, yeah no you can go <laughs> it was something else well I was gonna say like there's a little the other thing is, even when we weren't there, when we were in Cape Town, when we were staying, where we were staying in Cape Town, we were all living in the same complex. And most nights when we'd sit around and have some drinks and chill out, we're all away from our friends and family generally, we'd still talk about the show. And we'd play that guessing game of like, who's gonna die next? What could happen? How to maybe work out that scene that we don't think's working yet. And I think that's one of the reasons Black Sails did get better every year is because we're in this little hot house yeah. where there wasn't a moment that we weren't making sure, like, weren't wondering how we could make it even better than we yeah. already were. It's, it's very immersive as a show, mm. you know, because we are in that little hole in Cape Town that you, you, uh, you don't really come out of it, really. You're just sort of living mm -hmm. that, that world for, for seven months of the year or whatever it is. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I'm trying to think of something different, but... I'll, I'll, I'll say what I've said before anyway. Um, so I remember the last day uh, of shooting the storm sequence. I remember walking off drenched right through um, and just being having this kind of sense of uh, satisfaction, I suppose, that we've, we've managed to do it because the storm, that sequence it, on paper and the visions they had for it, and we saw the storyboarding for it, we're like, that's, that's crazy, man. There's no way we, we're going to be able to do that. Um, certain shots and certain things we were physically going to have to do, which is like, I'm not sure, how is this possible for a TV show? So when you walk away from it, knowing we'd, we'd got all the footage, um, it, was, it was a pretty special feeling, really. 
arriving at the maroon camp was amazing as well because yeah. we pretty much jumped on those canoes and were rowed in and you know everyone else was there, or the you know the people playing the maroons who lived there, and it it just felt real. We all looked yeah, at each yeah. other after that, for like the first take, like that just felt like we arrived at some new crazy island that we'd never yeah. seen before. So the show is so immersive that there were moments like that where you're like, this is as real as it will ever be. To yeah, being a pirate at that time. Um, get rid of your phone. Sorry, <laughs> man, you get buzzing on the sides. Oh, I grab it. Um, I guess, uh, is there anything you can tease about season four, even if it's the emotional direction your character goes? Ooh. Not many people get out unscathed from season four. I mean, we've all been through some pretty bad times, but season four is the worst for everyone, yeah. I think. I think it's safe to say that everything comes to a head. Yeah. Um, and with that, everyone has to... You know, if, if, if you're talking about, like, in, in the last three seasons, we've been working at, like, a, a seven or an eight. Like, everyone goes to ten. Yeah. It, the stakes are the highest they've ever been, and uh, it matters so much to everyone. So when you look at the action, uh, the emotional stuff, it, it matters more than ever. So And that all comes through, I think. Not that there isn't hope, and, so, you know, yeah. at, at the end, it's not all bleak, but it is... It's like, especially as an actor, it's like, go, well, this is going to take everything... I've ever done as an actor and have never done and I'm not sure I know how to do. And I think everyone was put through that yeah. this time. Yeah.